How did I come up with the idea of the split rail snowmobile ski? Well, way back in 2005, I was in conversation with some buddies and they were talking about this precision ski by Skidoo. That ski had two outside carbides and they liked the ski in the respect that it reduced the darting. But when they came into the corner, the ski would pack with snow and they'd push big time. And I really didn't think about it until the following summer and we were out on our boat on Georgian Bay and we were watching a high performance catamaran powerboat. And for those who don't know about a catamaran, basically they run with two keels, two engines, thousand horsepower aside. These boats are 65 feet long and uh, they come into the corner at 100, 125 mile an hour. And when they make the turn, they lose their lift and the, the keels cut the water big time and they can turn not only 90 degrees, but they can turn back on themselves. And it wasn't until the following morning I woke up, put the two concepts together and thought, you know, liquid water, frozen water, man, would this ever make an awesome design for a snowmobile ski. For someone who has never seen a split rail snowmobile ski, basically we have two rails and the two rails on the ski are attached at the tip. And then we have a custom made spindle that is arch shaped that goes over top of the ski that allows the snow to flow directly underneath the spindle. When you have those two rails and then when you put the second ski on you've got now four rails each rail has its own carbide, so we're running four carbides on our snowmobile. I think most consumers need to understand the limitations of a stock ski. All snowmobile skis, including our snowmobile ski, is designed to produce lift going straight ahead. The unfortunate part is when you come into a corner with the stock ski, there's a compromise. And the compromise is that lift is still produced with a stock ski. And to understand the dynamics, basically what happens is snowmobile skis are T-shaped. So when you come into the corner, the snow pressure builds against the side of the keel on a stock ski. And when that snow pressure gets to be greater than the weight of the rider and the weight of the sled, the snow deflects up the side of the keel, hits the underside of the ski, and produces lift. We call it push as snowmobilers, but really what's happening is the sled's lifting. So as it lifts, you get chatter and you get push going around the corner. That doesn't happen with a split rail ski because you're running four rails. Dual axis ski technology is basically the ski's ability to flex. Not only from front to back, basically from tip to tail it'll flex. As you go into a, uh, a divot, what happens is the ski will actually flex down into it, maintain contact with the snow so that carbides stay in contact throughout the corner. The other way that it flexes is from side to side, so the actual tips will actually flex up and down as you come into the corner, maintaining contact with the snow so that it does not push. In all the years we've been publishing Super Tracks magazine, there's no doubt that the biggest complaint we hear about snowmobiles and snowmobile handling is darting. And it is particularly undermining to the confidence of new riders, Female riders complain about it. Everybody complains about darting because the snowmobile feels like it's going to drive itself. You don't have the confidence that you're going to end up staying on your side of the trail. It just undermines your ability to enjoy the snowmobile ride. Well, let me tell you, the split rail ski, in all my experience in my years in this business, is the best answer to stopping darting. Our snowmobile ski eliminates the darting because of the four rails. So if you're dealing with uh, snow conditions and the snow is soft or uh, has some flexibility, what happens is that the four rails track true and straight. So if, a, if a, one of the rails wants to get into a, a rut of some kind, three of them compensate for the one trying to do that. That's why it tracks true and straight. And then if you're in conditions that are very, very uh, uh, hard, then the carbide takes over and it's a very well known fact that if you end up running four carbides on your snowmobile when one carbide wants to get into a, a rut the other three again compensate and uh, that's why the sled tracks true and straight. 
The two biggest things uh, for us that stood out in terms of advantages with a split rail ski are absolutely elimination of darting. And that's a huge one because everybody's trying to eliminate darting on, on every snowmobile they're riding. Nobody wants a darty snowmobile. So you put a set of split rails on your sled and immediately you will notice for sure less darting and that's a huge benefit. But also increased steering control, which of course more control means uh, a more relaxed ride, it means um, you know, a faster ride if that's what you want to do. And the split rail does improve precision control on every sled we've tested it on. A lot of people ask me whether it has the same flotation as a typical 5.7 ski. Yes, it does, because we have around the same surface area. It's just separated by a half inch each way. The whole concept of our ski is to uh, lose the flotation when you turn, so it digs down and bites in. The advantages the split rail ski yields in cornering performance are numerous, but the most easy to describe advantage comes from this reaction to having a split ski or two rails on the ground. And it's when you turn deep into a corner with lots of speed behind the snowmobile, the split rail ski does not try to climb up on top of the snow. Because you've spread the weight over two separate rails and you have two carbides biting, the ski tends to cut down in the snow rather than ride up like a conventional ski. So what you get is a very linear response to turn in. And that is confidence inspiring for a rider. With split rail skis, you get very linear, neutral handling from it because the ski is not trying to climb on top of the snow. It keeps itself cutting deep into the snow, cutting into the hard pack trail and providing really linear turning response. One of the major benefits to the consumer as it relates to the split rail ski is how much his slide rail wear is reduced. The ski has this unique capability that when you come into a corner, the inside ski hooks the snow, shoots it down between the rails, dumps it right on the front idler wheel, lubricates the slide rail and cools the sled. And this attribute, I can't stress how much uh, it changes the, uh, the wear our Yamaha Nitro that we have, uh, we've got three times the amount of life out of the slide rail. When we go to trade shows, I mean online, everybody kind of asks us if we're going across the lake and we hit open water, what's going to happen? Are we going directly down or are we going to be able to go across? I think we've done our due diligence and going over the top on testing that. We've gone across three quarters of a mile of open water, not that we're condoning going across open water, we're just saying that if you ever got into the situation where you were on the lake and you had to go across open water, we're going to tell you, yes, it will. The Split Rail Company is a family-run business. That's obvious. You don't have to go very far with these guys to find out that this is a father and his sons and his family involved in something that they've developed and that they love. And I think that passion is something that comes through with your product. And certainly with Split Rail, these guys are passionate about snowmobiles and snowmobile control, snowmobile handling, snowmobile skis. They're passionate about snowmobile skis and it comes through in the product for sure. In terms of skis, everybody's been trying to do something different with the same idea. One ski per side, trying different shapes, different profiles, and I'm not here to say that those things don't work in their own right. However, the split rail ski design takes the whole idea to a new level. It changes the game because you're dealing with way more carbide, way more control, way more ability to handle the speed and power of new snowmobiles with four contact surfaces rather than two. This is big stuff. This is not, this is not a small inconsequential change. And it has the ability and the potential over the years to affect ski design from this point moving forward. This product technology is so good that there's no question in my mind that it could become standard equipment on all new snowmobiles.